Where's a punk like this going to get the kind of stuff that we're looking for? We need weapons. What can we lose? A cop's dead. Now, if you want to take the blame for that, that's your privilege. But you're not going to do penance by forming a one-man posse, especially when somebody's out there sitting on enough firepower to turn Manhattan into another me lie. <laughs> Sorry to bother you, Chief. Now, what is it, McLeod? The new duty roster just came out. Somebody misspell your name? I'm assigned to Central Files again. I know. That's the third straight week. I know. I didn't come 2,000 miles to shuffle papers. Well, be that as it may, McLeod, but do you have any idea how peaceful it's been around here with you tucked away in Central Files? Chief, I can understand your need for peace and quiet, but I got a powerful need of my own, and it's not satisfied in Central Files. I'm here to learn big city police techniques, and you learn by doing, not by sitting on your can in central files. Well, McLeod, you're absolutely right. Maybe the first time, but you're right. And I think I've got just the spot for you. Oh? Where's that? Pelham Bay Park. Pelham Bay Park? Uh -huh. Yes, it's a special training facility in the Bronx. Oh, well, that's, that's more like it. Appreciate it, Chief. What kind of training is it? Well, it's something that will allow you to uh, get back in the saddle again, so to speak, uh, to uh, plant your feet in the stirrups and uh, gallop off to new challenges. Hey, there you go. Appreciate it, Chief. Really appreciate it. I want to tell you something. You ain't going to be sorry. One can always hope. Good morning, Murder. Joe, what are you so happy about? Starting special training, Pelham Bay Park. What's in Pelham Bay Park? <laughs>
Excuse me. Uh, my name's Sam McLeod. I think somebody up here is expecting me. Yeah, I am. Sergeant Rosovich. Delivered. McLeod, Chief. I'm up here in Pelham Bay Park. Well, congratulations on your unerring sense of direction. It's been a slight mistake. Yeah, that's what I said the day you got here. Chief, you've assigned me to the mounted police unit. And as you so deftly pointed out, you're here to observe and learn. Now, why don't you try doing that with the mounted? I'm sure you'll find it a most rewarding experience. Happy trails. Well, are you ours? Let's just say that you've got the loan of my body for a while, Sergeant. But you park it right down there, first door on the right beyond the stall. There you go. Background. <laughs> we are moving in package. Hey, no, man, we can't let him do that. We give the neighborhood a bad name. <clears throat> Besides, property values will go straight inside the toilet. <laughs> All right, when you throw, <laughs> when you throw, I got news for you. You go today. Oh, short notice, isn't it, Packy? Throw it back out. Hey, Packy, don't be so uptight, man. Frankie only wants to know why you didn't give us more, more uh, warning, you know. Because I wasn't going to give you this stuff until I had to. If you didn't shoot your own head off, you'd probably kill half the neighborhood. Oh, wow. Now, are these loaded? Yeah. Yeah, a little flag comes out and says, bang. Oh, 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 oh. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. That's funny. Hey, look. What is it, you, huh? Don't you ever say anything? Doesn't he ever talk? You got a voice? My brother talks, he wants to talk. Maybe he ain't got nothing to say to you. Well, I don't know why I let myself in for this. Mm. Look here. I have the keys to the bandits downstairs. Okay. Why don't you stop playing? Hey, man, I was going for a record. Yeah. All right, look, now, you got everything straight. Yeah, Packy. Thinking about us so much, you feel like you've done it already. Okay, now remember this. You gotta ditch the guns. And then you gotta get rid of the uniforms and get rid of the van. And then stay out of sight until I get in touch with you, okay? Then we ditch you, right? You get so nervous, man. You... That's why you sweat. <laughs> you know something, Chico? I don't like you. <laughs> you may not like him, you gotta put up on this. Because <clears throat> he's the only dummy besides me to do his job. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. If you had half a brain, you wouldn't do it either. You know, if you had half a brain, you'd be dangerous. <laughs> well, the kind of money you're talking about would take on the whole army. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Packy. Blingy boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sis, go. Let's see how fast you are. Hands up here. Draw. No, no, I'm not doing it. Hands up, all the way up. Die, die, like the movies, like the movies. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Like the movies, like the movies. Help me. Help me. Harold. Help me. Cut. Excuse me, little lady, is this seat taken? 
sergeant. Beg your pardon? I'm not a little lady. I'm a sergeant. Well, I never was much for rank. You can just call me Sam. And you can call me Sergeant Cross. You was a mounted? Uh-huh. Well, things are looking up in the old corral. What is that supposed to mean? Well, we were going to be saddlemates. That is, until I get my particular problem straightened out. Let's get something else straightened out. See, I'm a fellow police officer. Yeah, well, you're a lot more than that. I can tell that just by looking at you. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody, grab a seat. Captain wants to say a few words. Oh, allow me. Good morning. I'm Captain Detmer. Welcome to Mounted. Since this is an all-volunteer unit, I know that every one of you wants to be here and nobody's been dragged in by the heels. Statistics are generally dry and uninspiring, but I'm going to throw some at you anyway. We have 130 men and 110 horses, and some of us ride desks. We have our own radio band, and each member is issued a walkie-talkie. And since I've assumed command, we have two nine-horse vans that can get to any part of the city in a matter of minutes. We also have two-horse vans and station wagons to pull them. These wagons are equipped with radios and sirens, just like the real cops have. <laughs> now, that's a bad joke. Not because it isn't funny, but because a lot of people in the department don't think of us as real cops. They think we're only good for writing traffic tickets and leading the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Well, I want to tell you, we have something that no other cop has, and that's high visibility. Now, there must be something in that concept, because we get a lot of policemen from all over the country observing our program. As a matter of fact, we have a, a visitor today from Tempe, Arizona, Sheriff Ben Thornton. Welcome. I hope this proves education for you, Sheriff. Uh. <clears throat> Captain. Captain, I'm uh, Sheriff Thornton. Who the hell are you? Sam McLeod. Where are you from? I'm on temporary duty with New York Police Department. I'm from Taos, New Mexico. Then you're here to observe, too. Yeah, I'm uh, here to observe. I don't see much point in it. We don't have a mounted unit in Taos. <laughs> then what are you doing here? I'll be dipped if I know. Rosevich, would you explain what this man is doing in my unit? He was sent to us, Captain. Why? It beats me. You know, Captain, I really enjoyed that speech that you made. It's uh, especially the part about not wanting anyone that was dragged in by their heels. Is that how you came? I got scuff marks all the way from headquarters. You feel you're too good for mounted? No. Nope. No. I just didn't come to New York to learn to ride a horse. Well, until I get to the bottom of this, uh, we're stuck with one another. Try to uh, make it as painless as possible. Hmm? There you go. now that we're just beginning to hit it off. <laughs> Wouldn't bother me if somebody tries something. Hey, you really think we're gonna fool anybody with this outfit? Yeah, I think so. But we're getting signed. Oh, I hear us talk about when we get inside, what we're gonna do when we go outside. There's a lot of silence in between, you know. Yeah. What if something goes wrong? What if everything goes wrong? We might wind up dead. Pete's come back to this rat's nest. You know something, Manny? Dying isn't the worst thing that can happen to you. 
Once you know that, yeah. You've got the secret. Right, Donnie? you've all learned how to saddle your horse properly, the next step is to get something into it. So, placing your left foot in the stirrup, hoist yourselves up. matter? Nothing. What are you waiting for? I don't like to be rushed. You ever been on a horse before? There's nothing personal here, ma'am. Oh! A cloud. You'll get yours. That's a very friendly thought there, Sergeant. <laughs> Somebody tells me that girl's not cut out for the mountain. <laughs> Cloud? I just spoke to your chief. Yeah? What did you do to him? Nothing. Well, when I mentioned your name, he started making funny gurgling sounds. And then he began shouting about it being my turn. Yeah, well, I suppose that means I'm still with the mounted, right? The only way you're going to get out is in a pine box. Um, he said he'd go for that. Why don't you try to make the best of it, McLeod? With what you know about horses, you'd be a real help. And the mountain ain't such a bad place to be. Oh, well, maybe you got a point there, Sergeant. <laughs> Just cause my nose is out of joint, no need for the rest of my body to suffer. We've had no trouble with our electricity. It's because we switched it to another transformer, you know what I mean? We can't keep doing that to know forever. Emergency, dead. You know, no place to go. Get the picture. You got a work order? Work order, yeah. Probably in a truck. You want to take a minute to check it? Maybe I'd better check. I probably got it in my bag. <clears throat> yeah, it's in my bag. Hang up the phone, gentlemen. What do you want? I want you to put the phone down. Now I want you to stand up. Mm -hmm. I want you to take us downstairs like that was trouble with a fuse box, you know what I mean? You've got to be nuts. Yeah, I'm nuts. Nuts enough to blow your brains out. 
to tell one of the other generals to come and take over, you know what I mean? Like a fuse box. Hey, Evans, take over the phones for you. I'm going to show these guys the fuse box. Stupid. Get the guns. Open the door, dummy. Sergeant, I'll get a bottle of liniment, rub it in all the right places, you'll feel like a new man. So will I. I warn you, McLeod. I'm just trying to be friendly. I don't want your friendship. I just want to be treated as an equal while I'm wearing this uniform. Well, what happens when it comes off? Can't you forget I'm a woman? <laughs> That's pretty hard to ignore. You haven't even tried. Come on, boy. Come on. <laughs> Sergeant, uh, there's a kind of a, a wonderful sort of beauty comes over your face when you're a little bit mad. You know that? You don't take me seriously as a police officer, do you? Well, I don't know you as a police officer. Well, you're just like all the others. You confuse my ability with my sex. It started at the academy. I was the one they all wanted to frisk. Well, that's understandable, but you must have had something on the ball to make sergeant. Juvenile needed somebody who could type 80 words a minute and wipe noses at the same time. The stripes came with the tissue. Yeah, but they came, and not because you look good in a sweater, either. For the six years I've been on the force, I've been stuck behind a desk. Well, yeah, now, though. I'm tired. Oh, I'm rushing? Oh, I'm tired of being a nose-wiping type as McLeod. Well, you know, what I can't figure out is why you picked a mountain to prove your point. Captain Detmer requested women police officers. Now, that means I wasn't shoved down his throat. I'm free to demonstrate my ability without any sexual discrimination. Yeah, but the only thing that you've demonstrated so far is your powerful fear of horses. Does it show? Mr. Mike. Well, I, I just can't let that stand in my way. I'm tired of being on the back burner. Hey, listen, I'm familiar with the feeling, really. Anyone ride a ride back to Manhattan? Climb here, forward. I do. Here, let me give you a hand here. Thanks. Get the door. I think we got enough now. Why don't we split? More, before we get to bed. All right, dummies. Come on. Come on. Sergeant. Why? Well, uh, you're off duty, ain't you? <laughs> Mildred. Mildred. Yes. Well, Mildred, why don't we just kind of sit down over a nice, quiet dinner and talk this thing over? 
Central dispatch override. And all units in vicinity of 69th and Park. Assist RMP responding to a 1010. Shots fired. That's only a few blocks from here. Suspects driving Hudson Power Company van, traveling east on 69th toward Park. Hang a left, Sergeant. McLeod has spent 23 years on a horse. Now ain't the time to learn a new field. I guess you didn't understand Captain Detmer very well. He said it's time for the mounted to get off their horses and start looking for lawbreakers. Well, we just found one. So hang a left. For an ambulance. RMP Unit 5. Headquarters. We have a 1054. Two persons, both serious. Need ambulance over. 104. I got it over the radio. How'd it happen? Chasing some fellas in a Hudson Power van. Did you get a look at them? No. I'll ride at the hospital with them.
Yeah. Broad food. The grass will change. Yeah, we'll have a big party, invite the whole world. <laughs> Respected man. Sergeant. And, uh, Rosevich. Oh, one of yours? Yep. An instructor. weapons. Descriptions? Well, we're working on that. I can have a hundred men on the street in an hour. And they have other duties. Not anymore, they don't. Captain, my department's set up to handle this kind of an investigation. Yours isn't. Are you saying we can't be trusted with anything more than a parade? I don't want us working at cross purposes. It's as simple as that. They were my men. And we'll find the people responsible. Now listen, you can't order me to stay out of it. The commissioner can. Captain, I don't want to take it that far. All right. You won't have to. But you'd better find those punks. And fast. Let's get over to the armory. She's in shock. I had to give her a sedative. That's all I could do. What about Sheriff Thornton? Oh, his condition's the same. Critical, but stable. We just have to see how he passes the night. Thank you. Mildred? Come on, it's time to go home and get some sleep. Maybe I belong behind a typewriter after all. I'd hate for you to waste all that determination. Come on, let's let's try and get up. Not determination. Stupidity. Stupid to, to volunteer for the mud. I've never been on a horse in my life. McClough. I can't think about Rasevich or Sheriff Thornton. All I can see is me. Lying on that street with a blanket over my face. I don't think I can face that again. Well, let's hope you won't have to. But what if I do? Well, you'll just face it. But the fact is that you won't know how you'll react or what you'll do until that moment of truth comes, until it happens. Nobody does. I'm afraid of dying. Sergeant, I want to tell you something. You can't be a good cop if you ain't. The ones that ain't afraid of dying make an awful lot of mistakes. The kind of mistakes that get people hurt and get people killed. Were you afraid? Oh, you better believe it. 
just the same as you. That's natural. The time to worry is when you don't have that fear. But you can't let it cripple you. You can't let it whip you. It's just like riding a horse. The minute you fall off, you gotta get back on him. Otherwise, that horse winds up riding you. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Come on. Let's go home. Take this. Here comes Godzilla. I tried calling you all last night. City's gonna be on your tail. Do you have to kill him? Yeah. You guys don't have enough cards between you to make a full deck. <laughs> <laughs> you know we should have done that. We should pull a guy over and say, "We're well, just kidding." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Everything was clear, man. We dumped the van and the uniform over in Brooklyn. What are you worrying about? What'd you do with the pieces? I made sure our fingerprints were all over, and then we gave them to the cops. <laughs> <laughs> we bust them up, threw them in the sewer. All right. Okay, so you did something right. Thank you. Where's the merchandise? Where's the money? You get it when the deal's completed. When's that? I gotta go talk to my people, see how they want to take delivery. Look, why don't you guys go find a hole somewhere and crawl into it till I call you? you... I need the money now. Try welfare. your welfare. Yeah. Well, that's okay for now. Yeah. Oh, Chief, I'll get back to you, okay? They've cataloged the weapons taken from the armory. Machine guns, M16s, hand grenades, and enough ammo to make the next six months sound like the 4th of July. Who are they, Grover? Revolutionaries willing to die for some cause, or professionals looking to make a sale, or just punks tired of using Saturday night specials? Well, if we knew that, we'd know where to start. Well, let's start with the obvious. Maybe we can get creative later on. I want you to round up every revolutionary group we have a line on. Well, some of them are pretty far underground. I don't care if you use dynamite. Get them in here. Yes, sir. Now, what about ballistics? They come up with anything on those slugs? Broadhurst is handling that. Chief, nothing out of my cloud. Well, what does ballistic have to say? The slugs taken from that marine sentry don't match any known weapon. Chief, I know that you're up to your ears with this thing, but... It's I... higher than that. Well, then just tell me where to start. Start? Start on what? On finding Rosevich's killers. Now, the last time I looked, you were assigned to mounted, not homicide. Chief! Yeah. What is it? Yeah. They just found the van. Where? Yeah, Brooklyn. We'll get the lab boys on it right away. Chief, I've got more incentive than most. I watched a cop die in my arms. That's not an incentive. That's a vendetta. And there's no room for that in this investigation. Now, what about the sketches of the suspects? Well, they're running off copies. We should have them on the street this afternoon. No, I Chief. want them on the street before noon. Look, Chief, you don't understand. Rosevich didn't want to answer that call. A I cop... pushed him to it. A cop's dead. Now, if you want to take the blame for that, that's your privilege. But you're not going to do penance by forming a one-man posse, especially when somebody's out there sitting on enough firepower to turn Manhattan into another me lie. 
Chief, Commissioner's on three. Now you get your butt back to the Bronx and you stay there, or I'll bury you in central files till you're eligible for an old age pension. What you ordered. Yeah, I read about it. I want to move it. I bet you do. Name the time. Why don't you try me in a couple of years? We have a deal. Watch the boats. deal didn't include killing a cop. Listen, when you came to see me, I told you no professional's gonna walk into no National Guard armory and heist weapons. So I went out, and I get a bunch of flakes. You know what I mean, flakes? They got guts, but no brains. Yeah, well, they sure proved that. Well, you got what you wanted. Look, our guys are getting picked up left and right, and... Ones they don't pick up, they start following. That ain't gonna last. Right, fine, fine. Well, just wait. Well, they stop bothering us. I thought your kind was always in a hurry. Look, my friend. You haven't the vaguest idea what my kind is. I don't care. Aren't you even curious about what we're going to do with those weapons? Look, I'm a broker. People come to me, they want all kinds of things. They want fur coats, watches, television sets, automatic weapons. It's all the same thing. It's an order. Yeah. Well, if there was another way, I wouldn't waste my time with you. There's always another way, sonny boy, but your kind doesn't take the trouble to find out. Here. This is a book. A book. You might find it enlightening. It's about the martyrs of the Spanish Inquisition. Maybe it'll give you some insight into what's happening today. <laughs> Coldest piece you've ever seen. It's never been fired. Mm, it's muy bonita. <laughs> mm. Where'd you get it? Found it. Where? Hey, with those, man. How much? 150. That's pretty steep, man. Come on. That's a class B, Hector. Put that in somebody's ear, you get anything you want. Including my wife. Unless you want to keep that piece of junk you got. <laughs> yeah, that junk you got's always jamming, Hector. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's not you right there, man. I'll lay the rest on you later. When I score, huh? Always a chance, you know, Hector. Always. Risk. Always. Hey, come on, Frank, will you? I mean, with a piece like that, I could I could retire in a month, man. You got heavy bills, so you need money now in a month. A quick knock over and I'll be back, I swear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> come on, Frank, will you? Huh? Okay, Hector. But you make it sooner than later, you know what I mean? Out of sight. I'll be back now. I swear, huh? Thanks, Frank. Huh? Oh, you believe? Anybody else? Oh, it's Phil. Jerry? Hey, Naldo's worth a try. Get him over here. Hey, Danny. I hope somebody's out. Hey! <laughs> what are you doing? Well, man, it's like this. You know, you pay the rent. And then you go out and you make a little profit. Hey, well, what are you gonna do, sell in the street corner? No. Hawk shops. been 
waiting for you. McLeod, huh? thanks for yesterday. Where have you been? Headquarters. Well, why the hell didn't you call me? You're assigned here. They making any progress? Sounds like they got a bunch of dead ends to me. Well, I passed the word to the troops. You can bet that Mounted's gonna do all it can to catch those punks. That's the kind of talk I like to hear. It doesn't affect you. You know that I'm just wasting my time getting on off that horse. I agree. So until I find a replacement for Rasovich, I'm making you acting instructor. Now don't, now don't fight, fight it, McLeod. You'll only lose. Captain, Scully just called in. He called it some clown trying to hold up a liquor store. Well, what does he want, a commendation? Well, you may want to give him one, sir. That clown was carrying a brand new automatic weapon. Scully's positive it's military issue. Where'd they got him? Headquarters. Who's headquarters? I'm mounted. Anybody else know about this? No, sir. Scully's following your orders to the letter. Just see that it stays that way. Yes, sir. I'm going with you, Captain. No, you're not. You're gonna teach these recruits the fundamentals of horsemanship. I got what you might call a personal stake in this. Cloud, I need you here. You're acting instructor. Instruct! again, punk. And I'll inform you of mine. I have a right to know where you got that piece. I told you a hundred times. I like hearing it. I found it. Where? On 114th Street. Where on 114th Street? In a garbage can under a lot of crud. Hector, that's the worst story I ever heard. Well, it's true, all right? Why would anybody want to ditch a beautiful piece like that? Maybe it was hot. It hasn't even been fired. I don't know why. McLeod, I don't think this is the kind of instruction the captain had in mind. Well, you're going to have to be out on the streets, ain't you? You might as well get used to horns honking, dogs yapping, cars backfiring. Haven't we gone far enough? You're just beginning your field training, Sergeant. What do you mean, just beginning? Well, since Captain Detmer wants everybody in mounted to start catching lawbreakers, I figure you might as well know what to do once you get one. Hector, you're so dumb. It's pathetic. You didn't even file off the serial numbers. That means we can trace it. And you know where that's going to take us? To 114th Street. No, 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 no. To the armory heist. Yeah, I had nothing to do with that. And when we tie it to the armory, you don't go down for simple attempted robbery. No, no. You go down for murder, killing a cop. No, man. Yeah, man. Cop killing. You heard about the nice new law we have in New York, huh? Anybody ice as a cop can go to the chair. Zzz, makes you sizzle. Like hey, get off my back, will you? McLeod! Just relax, Sergeant. I am relaxed. Hey, you see, you've only been out a little while, and already you're beginning to improve. Where'd you get that piece? Look, you can't hang no cop killing on me, man. I got an airtight. That piece just shot holes in it. No, because I was with my P.O. Ho, ho. Yeah. Yesterday's my day to report. While somebody was out there spraying your cop, I was sitting with my parole officer telling him what a good boy I'd be. <laughs> Don't try to be clever, Hector. That story can blow up in your face with one phone call. Hey, how long you the dime? Who sold you the piece? I found it! All right, Hector, listen. I can talk to the DA for you. Do a little plea bargaining, you know? You give me a name, and I'll get you reduced. Gracias, but no gracias. With your record, it's a sure six. Six years or six months. I gotta get on sometime, right? 
I mean, I just don't want to spend the rest of my life looking over my shoulder, you dig? You want protection? We'll give it to you. He doesn't understand, man. He works my turf and he doesn't understand. I gotta make an enemy. I'd rather it be you. Who sold you the piece, you creep? I found it in a garbage can on 114th Street! Now, this is what we call the booking area here. Hey, what's going on here? I'm taking these recruits on a tour, Sergeant. Well, who are you? The name is Sam McLeod. I'm acting instructor for the Mountain. Now, this is where you'll bring the outlaw once you rope it. You just walk right up to the desk here. The sergeant has a book, and he'll put it all down in that little ledger there. Uh, sergeant, why don't you just go ahead and tell him what happens after that? Well, we hold the suspects in a holding cell until they can be taken down to the tombs. Thank you, sergeant. That's very helpful. Appreciate it. Now, if you recruits will just come this way, please. Is Captain Detmer still in with Ramirez? What's that got to do with your tour? Hey, I like your attitude, Sergeant. Too many people running around shooting their mouths off, spilling the beans, you know what I mean? I got my orders on Ramirez from Captain Dipma personally. Yeah. Well, if we're right about this, uh, the Captain and me, this Ramirez could be a, a key figure in a very important case. Since when do instructors get involved in important cases? I can't say anymore, Sergeant. I've got my orders, too, you understand? Hey. It's about that armory holdup, isn't it? I think I've said too much already. Hey, you're not giving away any secrets. I knew it the minute they come in here and drop that automatic pistol on my desk. Well, I suppose it doesn't take a genius to figure out that that was Marine issue. There's no doubt about it. It still has some of the packing grease on it. I know. I suppose this Ramirez has got some cock and bull stories how he got a hold of it. He claims he found it in a garbage can. <laughs> Garbage can. <laughs> well, it doesn't really make any difference what he claims as long as he fits the description. Yeah, but that's the funny part about this. He doesn't look like any one of these guys. Is this McLeod? Field training. What do you mean, field training? Now, I know this isn't expected, Captain, but I just couldn't shirk my responsibility as acting instructor. I began to think that wasn't such a good idea. It's really been very valuable. I mean, you get an entirely different uh, perspective when you're actually right there on the street. Y you know, uh, horns honking and cars backfiring and dogs. Well, Sergeant, I, I think that the captain has something more important on his mind right now. You know, it's just too bad that Ramirez didn't fit any of those descriptions. And if he sticks to that story about finding that gun in a garbage can, we're going to be hard-pressed to prove he's lying. Isn't he working with you, Captain? Well, not as much as I'd like to be. I'll say this for you, McLeod. You just don't give up, do you? Just trying to get in the spirit of the mountain. Well, since you obviously know as much about this case as I do, you, uh... You got any ideas? Well, if this Ramirez uh, wasn't part of the robbery, he certainly knows who was. Yeah. He probably bought the piece from them. That's right. And if they're selling, maybe we ought to be buying. <laughs>
Jeez, you didn't make no friends over here, did you? Huh? Hey, huh? on that van? Hundreds. Most of them smudged. But they're sending what they can to the FBI. Well, what about uniforms? Well, forensic has them now, but uh, they don't hold out much hope. Please, Broadhurst. My head's swimming from all the progress we've been making. Why don't you throw in something negative just to balance the ledger? Chief, the commissioner on seven. See? All I had to do was ask. Robert. Take it to my office. Well, now, Chief, you'll want to take this one. Tell the commissioner. I'll get right back to him. Right. Clifford. How many? Now, oh, give me the addresses. Right. No, send them over here right away. I want to dust them for prints. That was the pawn shop detail. They're making a routine sweep through East Harlem. They uncovered five automatic pistols. The serial numbers match those taken from the armory. Well, obviously, I don't have to tell you what that means. Those weapons beginning to hit the streets, continues in any volume, could wind up with a city better armed than the police. I want that entire section covered. You and Brown coordinate it. Use as many men as we can spare. Yes, sir. Now, those are the pawn shops that accepted the weapons. Try them first. Then go to bars, street corners, any place people congregate. If that doesn't work, then you start going door to door. Uh, something's wrong, Grover. Something's missing. Rip off a cache of weapons worth a small fortune and then start peddling them for peanuts. Doesn't make sense. At least it rules out any kind of revolutionary group. They wouldn't be trying to sell the stuff. No, I suppose not. You want me to pull the surveillance on them? Broadhurst could use the manpower in the street. Yeah, might as well. Well, I better give the commissioner the good news. Hey, buenos dias, Capitan. Get up. Get up. Come on up. Looks like the revolution is going to have to come without you, unless it can wait 15 years. Oh, hey. Get him out of here. Easy, what do you got the risk, will you? Hey, Captain. Didn't look like you pulled that punch. I couldn't afford to. Ramirez doesn't buy McLeod all the way. He's going to have a lot more than a sore stomach to worry about. On charges. Maybe even get the rap thrown out, huh?
Okay, guys, come on. We better hurry if we're gonna get there before they do. Back. Let's get something and take these things off. Let's go. What are you, commies or something? It wasn't my fault. So whose connection fault was with the it? Cop. Mine? We're getting tired of sitting around talking about changing things. We need guns. We were just going to get on guns. You. One, you might as well stop people on the street. Now shut that smart mouth of yours. I'm running this organization. Not anymore, you're not. While you were in, we voted you out. I'm gonna get the guns we need. Oh, here you are. I'm running this organization. Then prove it. And you can start by cleaning up this mess. Well, you what made. the hell did you think that I was going to do? Play Tiddly Winks? Hey, man, now wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Will you? I mean, I, what, I'm not gonna say nothing. I mean, who, who would I tell? Cops. Why? I'm running just like you. Look, look, I don't care what you two guys are into. No, not until they arrest you, right? And you start thinking about making some kind of a deal, right? And then you give them this address, no, right? I swear I wouldn't do anything like that, man. You bet you're not. Get in the bedroom. Now listen to me. You want weapons, right? Well, maybe I can get them for you. In the bedroom. I'm telling the truth. I'm not interested. Later, will in you the please bedroom. tell them, please? You got brains, huh? I can get you all the pieces Wait you want. Wait a second. Maybe we should hear him out. Where's a punk like this going to get the kind of stuff that we're looking for? Use your head! Not me, man. My friends, man. They made a big score. Rifles, machine guns, man. Grenades. Honest. We need weapons. What can we lose? Right. I mean, if I'm lying, then you can burn me. Who are these friends of yours? How do we know they got the kind of stuff we're looking for? Go talk to them. I'll bring them back here. Yeah, sure you will. Man, you can trust me. You bet I can, because you're going to be dead. All right, I'll call them, all right? I'll call them. We'll set up a meeting. We'll look them over here. It's worth a phone call. You dial a number. I'm gonna be doing the listening. Will you stop waving that thing around? You better know what you're talking about, pal. Who do I talk to? 
Frank. Fra Frank, yeah. You're gonna be awful unlucky if he ain't there. The phone's in the hallway, man. Give it time to ring, will you? Frank? Yeah, who's this? <laughs> this is a friend of a friend. Hold on a minute. Nothing that a simple country boy can't understand. You got me? I got you. Hey, Frank, it's Hector, man. Yeah? What the hell happened to you? Yeah, you wouldn't believe it. I told you. Mm. You owe us 60 bucks. You forget about that right now. I come across something a lot richer, man. Like what? Yeah, I made some new friends, you know, and guess what? What? They're in the market for some heavy equipment. You trust them? I don't know. You bring them now, those round four. We'll check them out. If they don't check out, we're gonna burn them and you. Right. Uh, we uh, meet them at a bar, 118th Street, 4 o'clock, man. Hey, look, can I uh, wash up? I feel like a slob. Bedroom. Everything I own is quivering. This is the easy part. You think there'll be any shooting? Let the department know, okay? Anything? Same here. This ain't doing any good, Joe. Even if they knew something, they're not gonna tell us. You have a better way? If I had, I would I would sell it to the department and retire. Then let's go, huh? I'll take the other side for a while. Maybe it'll change our luck. Yeah, sure. Friends here, yeah? Frank, Manny, Don. Sam. Sam. Yeah, Millie. Frank. Uh, beer, let's go. How much, honey? Nothing. Nothing. I like to keep a clear head. Hmm. Two beers, Donnie. Millie's a suspicious one in the crowd. <laughs> Seems to me we ought to be suspicious. Could be a couple of cops. That works two ways, friend. Hey, do we look like cops to you? <laughs> Last time I did business with anyone, he wore a beard and carried a purse. Took a badge out of the purse. That's how me and your friend here met. <laughs> we busted out of the can together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know you got enough bread for this stuff. I haven't seen anything worth buying yet. <laughs> do you think what we got comes out of our back pocket or something? <laughs> well, I do have a small sample with me. Well, sometimes the runt of the litter will tell you a whole lot about the rest of the breed. You show me yours, I'll show you mine. Give it to me. like we found what we've been looking for. When can I see the rest of it? Don't get all sweated up. Donnie, get some beers, will you? Stop this promise to somebody else. Now, don't jerk me around, friend. You here to sell me something or not? Easy, cowboy. Hey, man. Pa can never give us anything but promises. Hundred and fifty pistols. Two hundred rifles. 
and 250 for machine guns. Hey, you guys interested in some hand grenades? They might come in handy. That's 50 apiece. Do you? Well, we gotta get a few things together. So, uh, you can make it tomorrow, the money will bring us down. Okay? Hmm. Hmm. Look, you don't need me. I'm gonna split, huh? Hey, Hector. You stay out of trouble, you understand? Forget that address. We don't live there anymore. We just moved. Got it? Mom's the word. Scott Simon. Hasta luego. Hey, sorry, huh? Hey, just uh, so that you know that I'm operating in good faith, I'll take that little sample off of you now. Hundred and fifty? Yeah. One fifty. I'm done. I'm, can we just think a little? I'm thinking about Donnie. Those damn guns. We never should have said yes to Packy. Hey, Frank, let's get our money. Let's make him give it to us. You make it. What are you doing, man? I'm going to kill me a hillbilly cop. Oh, Frankie! An unauthorized, undercover operation by a unit with no experience in undercover work. What do you think mounted is, your own private army? We offered you our help. And I turned it down for exactly this reason. We're all of us lucky a cop wasn't killed today. None of this would have happened if your man hadn't gone charging in where he had no business. He was trying to save your man's life. My man's life wasn't in danger until your man showed up. All of this could have been avoided if you'd have turned Ramirez over to us. You wouldn't have gotten any more out of him than we did. And now we won't get anything out of him. After what happened today, he probably won't stop running till he gets to Mexico. There was no way we could tie him to the armory. And there was no way we could get him to tell us who was. He was going to slip through our fingers. We had to take a chance. And you had to send this backwoods Barrymore undercover. And he was this close to getting those weapons. Chief, I think we're worrying too much about the chuck holes that we've already gone over. It's the ones up front we ought to concentrate on. What chuck holes? Well, these fellas want to sell the guns, right? Well, I still think they're going to try. Is that a fact? That's right. Now, there's a fellow named Packy that set up the whole deal. And I think they're going to run straight to him for the money. Joe, compile a list of all known fences. Maybe Packy will turn up among them. Yes, sir. I'll help you. No, you won't. You and Sergeant Cross will fill out a detailed report about today's fiasco. Yes, sir. Rest of you can go. I might speak to Captain Detmer alone. There's no way I can keep this one from the commissioner. I don't expect you to. I've, uh, I've earned everything he throws at me. But I had to do something. 
Well, we've all been under a lot of pressure on this one. Yeah. Tell me something. Who's, uh, whose idea was this? I'll take full responsibility. No, well, it's just, uh, my own curiosity. I can promise you it won't leave this room. Clouds. Welcome to the club. Well, what is this? Beating on a corner in the middle of the night someplace? What do you think, you're a spy or something? We want our money, Packy. Man, I can't get it. I can't get it till I deliver the stuff, and the stuff's too hot to move. Look, it's now or never. Now, you guys don't want to buy the guns. We'll find somebody who will. <laughs> Where are flakes like you gonna find anybody with that kind of dough? I got news for you. We got somebody. He's willing to buy him right away, and he's willing to pay for it, too. We saw the bread. So we give Packy one last chance to make good, you know? You're a devious little... Hey. We sell the guns to somebody else, you're gonna miss out in a, in a commission as fat as... Uh, as fat as you are. You wouldn't do that to old Packy. You wouldn't do that to me, huh? Tomorrow morning, Packy. <laughs> or that cash register in your head is gonna go tink, tink, clink, no sale. I'll see what I can do. Grab a couple of hours sleep, Sergeant. See what they've come up with on that fellow in the barn. Cloud, I have been hospitalized, shot at, threatened, and I haven't even finished my training. <laughs> well, you know the best way to catch a pig, don't you? No. Huh? No. Just jump in the trough with him. Oh, yeah. Well, I just want to jump into bed. Well, that's a very friendly thought, Sergeant. started going off. All I wanted to do was just crawl into a hole. I wasn't any good to you or myself. Hang a lift. My, my apartment's the other way. My hotel's closer. Cloud, when I said I wanted to jump into bed, I meant to sleep. <laughs> well, this is all my line duty, Sergeant. Are you ordering me to your hotel room? No, we're being followed, and I just want to get to familiar territory. What are we going to do? question. Go around the block and see if you can get his license number. Cowboy at uh, Boots. Marshal McLeod? I don't know. 
Where's his wallet? Better bring it back to him. All right, I'll see you, guess it. Yeah, sure. Without the money. I'll give it to him. Might be a reward, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. from out of state are a pretty uh, rough breed. Sheriff Thornton's off the critical list. Oh, really? Well, that's nice to hear. Must be that good, clean country living. <laughs> um, did you uh, see who it was? I just got a peek at him before the lights went out. But from what I could see, I think he's one of the fellows that's been causing all the trouble. You got it? Give it to him. That's the license number of the guy that was driving. I thought maybe you might want to give it to Chief Clifford personally. You ever get tired of police work, you might try the diplomatic corps. Well, Sergeant Cross and I have been through an awful lot on this one. We'd like to see it through to the end. Sergeant Cross, you sure do get involved, don't you? Well, whatever happens, that's up to Chief Clifford. Appreciate it if you'd put in a good word for me. I'm looking for someone to put in a good word for me. But, uh... I'll do my best. There you go. Got the money? I don't like ultimatums, Keith. You contracted for a shipment. Pay for it or you lose it. All right, all right. At least the cops aren't following us anymore. I told you it wouldn't last. But if anything goes wrong, I hope you're the first one to get it. Let's go. You're funny. You're funny! 
All right, come on. Patrol 1-6. Go ahead, 1-6. Just spotted suspect vehicle, license 296-YAP on 10th Avenue. Any sign of life? Negative. Keep an eye on it. OK. 10-4. Patrol 1-6. Go ahead, 1-6. Suspect vehicle just took off 10. Turn east on 46th Street. Two occupants, OK? 10-4. Patrol unit 3-8. Go ahead, dispatch. Suspect vehicle traveling east on 46th. See if you can pick it up, OK? the car moving north on Fifth Avenue. Who spotted it? Well, one of yours, as a matter of fact. Well, that makes me part of it, doesn't it? Under my command, following my orders. I wouldn't have it any other way. Joe, monitor its progress. Mobilize as many units as you can without stripping the precinct. Right, Chief. All units in the vicinity of 110th Street and Fifth Avenue. Suspect vehicle, license number 296 YAP, heading east on 110th. Track, but do not intercept. That's us. Cloud, we're not in the vicinity of 110th and 1st. We will be, Sergeant. Just hang on. RMP unit 721. 721K. Suspect vehicle coming your way on East River Drive. 10-4. Go ahead, dispatch. See it yet? Not a sign. It should have passed you by now. I'll take a swing back. 10 4. Seven, two, one to dispatch. Go ahead. K. We lost it. This is Clifford. I want the East River Drive blocked off from 110th to 72nd Street. A backup unit to cover the surface streets. Just happened to be in the vicinity, Chief, when the call came in. As long as you're here, make yourself useful. Work your way downtown. Right. We'll make it uptown. How could we lose them in broad daylight? Well, the area's sealed off. They can't get far. We just don't want them getting to those guns.
Warden, you stay with him. 